Good afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome to the Johns Hopkins School of Education. Thank you for joining us for the Postmaster Certificate in Applied Behavior Analysis in our virtual open house. My name is Liz Woodward and I serve as the Director of Admissions here at the School of Education. I'm joined this afternoon by Dr. Tamara Martyr and an alumni of our Postmaster Certificate in Applied Behavior Analysis, Alicia Wolf. Uh, both will serve as our co-presenters for today's session. I will introduce each shortly, um, but before we get started, I would like to cover a few logistical items for the webinar. First, today's webinar is being recorded. The admissions office will make the recorded presentation available on our website should you wish to review it again, or maybe even to share it with a friend or colleague who may also be interested in our Applied Behavior Analysis Postmaster Certificate. We ask that you please enter your first and last name or email address that you use to register for today's event so that we may note your participation. participation. Lastly, please take a moment to make sure your microphone is on mute and your video camera is off. We ask that you keep your microphone silenced for the duration of the presentation. At the end of today's session, I will invite you to ask questions to our presenters and to me using the chat function below. I will read your questions presented to the audience and together with our faculty and alumni presenter will provide additional information and answers to your specific questions. I'd like to share today's agenda for the virtual webinar. Uh, we'll start the presentation by sharing a brief overview of the uh, Johns Hopkins School of Education. I will then turn over the next portion of our presentation to our faculty presenter. Later, um, and we'll review, uh, I will come back to the presentation to review some important next steps in the application process, including tuition, financial aid, scholarships, and then to conclude with our question and answer period. So a little bit about uh, the Johns Hopkins School of Education. Um, we've established in 2007, we've quickly uh, taken its place as our uh, national leader in educational reform through research and teaching. Grounded in the Johns Hopkins tradition of research and evidence-based practice and innovation, the School of Education has consistently ranked among the uh, top graduate schools of education, ranked by US News and World Report and university as a whole ranked as number 16 in the international rankings by the, uh, time, the world rankings um, Time, uh, Times University rankings, excuse me. Over the past 13 years, school has grown its mission to train teachers, school leaders to produce leading educational scholars and foster research that leads to evidence-based improvements, particularly in K through 12 education through not only our uh, master's, doctoral and graduate certificate programs, but also through our centers, which are dedicated to research and reform, social organization for schools, our Institute of Educational Policy, and our Center for Technology and Education. Today, the school has 127 full-time faculty, 2,465 enrolled students across six areas of academic emphasis. The school has two campus locations, one at our Columbia Center location, and the education building is located on our Johns Hopkins main Homewood campus in Baltimore City as well as a growing number of fully online programs, as well as collaborations with such national degree partner organizations as Teach for America and the Urban Teachers Program. So the purpose of today's event is not only to help you learn more about the Applied Behavior Analysis Certificate, but it's also an opportunity for you to get a closer look at our programs, get advice and guidance from our faculty, as well as to learn about opportunities, trends, um, research, changes in the particular field of your program of interest. This is all helped, uh, designed really to help you discern your next steps of making decision about whether the postmaster certificate is the best fit for investing in your professional future. This event is a chance for you to engage, to ask questions, to move closer to deciding if you'd like to apply. We hope that you will find it useful and look forward to receiving your completed application. We are accepting applications for our fall 2020 semester. Um, that semester is to begin at the end of August, August 26th. There's plenty of time to um, submit your application for consideration. I will be back in a little bit with some more details for you about the admissions process, but I would now like to introduce uh, this afternoon's uh, first presenter, Dr. Tamara Martyr. 
Dr. Martyr serves as an associate professor for the Applied Analysis, Autism, and Severe Disabilities programs. She's a licensed psychologist and board certified analyst, BCADAD, and she's worked in the applied behavior analysis field for over 26 years and has extensive experience working with children with developmental disabilities and families in a variety of settings, including schools, homes, and hospitals. Her research includes improving learning outcome for students with developmental disabilities and autism through the effective training and preparation of educators and professionals who provide educational services. In 2015, Dr. Martyr received the Excellence in Teaching Award from Johns Hopkins University Alumni Association. Now I'd like to turn our presentation over to Dr. Tamara Martyr. Dr. Martyr. Thank you, Liz, and welcome everybody. Um, first of all, I wanna start off by just talking about what is applied behavior analysis. And most of you who are interested in applying to this program, to our postmaster certificate in ABA, already know what applied behavior analysis is. But some points that I want to make is that, one, it is the scientific study of these principles of learning and behavior, why we do what we do. ABA is also a systematic approach for applying those principles of learning to improve socially important behavior for all individuals. So if we're thinking about school behaviors or behaviors that we see in school, are the appropriate behaviors we want to see, those skills we want to see our students grow, and those behaviors that may um, interfere with learning in a school setting. So it's a systematic approach for understanding those behaviors to increase as well as behaviors we want to decrease. When we look at, um, we look at board certification and behavior analysis, that is the um, credential at the graduate level for students to practice in behavior analysis. So a lot of times we get the question of what is ABA and this information comes directly from the Behavior Analyst uh, Board Association for Behavior Analysis website, um, which talks about um, different areas for practitioners of ABA. So from conducting behavioral assessments to analyzing data and making database decisions on instructional programming, to um, writing not only behavior intervention plans and functional behavior assessments, but revising those plans and making recommendations, um, training others to implement behavior analytic services, um, as well as overseeing um, the implementation of plans, which co coincides with that um, training of others. And all of this can be found in the um, applied behavior analysis uh, task list. We're actually up to the fifth edition task list and that this program will be um, will be focused on the fifth edition task list. So when we think about all of these um, different areas, if you can go back one slide, we think about all these different areas under what is ABA. If you are considering applying to our program and these are um, areas that you currently work in or um, activities that you currently um, implement, but you want more training, or you want um, to begin implementing these different um, practices, then this is a program to consider um, when looking at applied behavior analysis. Okay, next slide. So let's talk about what the program looks like. Um, this program at uh, Johns Hopkins School of Education is designed for folks who are working in an educational setting. So special educators, we have general educators, coordinators of programs, administrators. We've had a lot of school psychologists go through our program as well as school counselors. And for folks who are interested in applying to the program, you will learn the evidence-based evidence practice of ABA to meet this growing need of students, growing needs of students who receive special ed services. So this will also support, this program will also support the career goals of special educators um, and other personnel who desire the specialized training. So the way the course, the courses are broken down, we have seven courses, which is 21 credits um, that are part of the postmaster certificate. We also have the option to enroll in the four practicum courses, which I'll be talking about a little bit more in detail. Um, so we offer four practicum courses and the program can be completed in two to three years. So if you choose to do the four practicum elective courses, it will take you three, three years to complete the program. 
All of our faculty who teach within the ABA program here are board certified behavior analysts. Okay, so the Association for Behavior Analysis International is the association that verifies all of our coursework to meet the requirements in order for graduates to uh, take the exam, to sit for the board certified behavior analyst exam, become a BCBA. So um, our program has been around since 2013 and our courses have been verified following the fourth edition task list. As many of you are probably aware, we are now entering into the time where the fifth edition task list is the task list which everybody will be tested under for um, January, beginning in January of 2022. So people who are entering into this program during the fall 2020 um, semester should be prepared to take the fifth edition of the coursework. So we are currently under review with the Association for Behavior Analysis International for verification of our courses. So the structure of the program, so candidates can complete all courses and the practicum within six semesters. So again, across those three years by taking two courses each semester. Our courses are offered um, on campus at a central location in Columbia, two nights per week. So a lot of times uh, applicants will ask me how, you know, how much time should I be devoting um, to coming to the campus for courses. Um, so that would be two nights per week. We also have the opportunity, as I mentioned, for students to um, enroll in our practicum electives, which are planned according to your current place of employment as long as you are able to implement um, ABA services or practices within that placement. If that's not the case, then we have a uh, practicum coordinator who coordinates for all of our students placements at appropriate sites. Um, so that is there is that opportunity if you're not currently in a um, position where you can practice behavior analysis or implement behavior analysis, uh, we can work with you to help place you on an appropriate placement. Okay, um, <clears throat> so if you look at um, across the three years, uh, the course sequence, the, the one, um, one of the great benefits of this program is that it's a cohort program. So we have an alumnus who will be talking to you shortly. Um, but all of our students come in together into the program as a group. And so if you come in with 15 students, then you're with those same 50, 15 students across the entire program. This is a great way to network um, with, other, um, with other students in your field and also a great way to set up study groups once you complete the program and are ready to take the exam. So during, um, you can see all of the courses are listed along each year and how um, each uh, sequence is set up. So during the fall semester, I always say that we start out the ABA program like you're going to a new country and learning a new language. So we start off with what is applied behavior analysis and um, an introduction to special education and ABA. And in this course, we learn the language of applied behavior analysis and all the principles. And then we also, um, in the second course during the fall semester is focused on research methods and single case design, where how do we evaluate the outcomes of our interventions and strategies. Um, once you take these first two courses, you are then applying everything that is learned in this in these first two courses to all the other courses um, throughout the program. So the second semester, we look at um, the course on behavioral assessment, challenging behavior. So we're focused only on uh, excessive behaviors, behaviors that we want to decrease. We also um, move into the course in that spring semester to review ethics and professional conduct for behavior analysts. So how do we, what are our ethical standards as behavior analysts? Because there are specific ethical standards that we need to follow. And um, more specifically, how do we conduct ourselves um, professionally as a behavior analyst, especially within a uh, school setting? Um, we do not offer courses in the summer, and so then after the first year, you come back in the fall semester and you work on behavioral assessment and instructional strategies. And this course, we're looking solely at increasing the skills and behaviors that we want to see. So skill deficits that we want to increase. So typically, a lot of times we will see behavioral assessment challenging behaviors go hand in hand with 
decreasing behaviors um, go from the spring semester go hand in hand with instructional strategies, right? So we wanna decrease behaviors, but when we're decreasing behaviors, we should also be increasing the behaviors we wanna see. So a lot of times those two courses can go hand in hand. We thought it was important to separate out those two courses. So we're focusing one semester solely on decreasing challenging behaviors and another semester solely on how do we increase uh, appropriate behaviors that we wanna see. Also during that first year in the fall, sem that second year in the fall semester, uh, students will begin taking their first practicum course, which I'll talk about shortly. And then in the spring semester, um, we, um, we have the course on applications of ABA in the classroom where we are looking at specific applications of ABA in education. Um, anything from early intervention to positive behavioral supports, to understanding uh, the nuances of functional analysis in a school setting, as well as understanding um, how do we um, train other people and consult in school settings. Then, um, whoops, go back one slide, please. And then in the third semester, we come back in the fall semester. At the third year, we come back in the fall semester and we have a course on supervision and consultation practices in ABA. This is our newest course that aligns with a fifth edition task list. Um, where um, the focus in our field is to not only be trained on all of these different strategies and principles of behavior, but how do we supervise other people and how do we consult to implement all of these strategies. So this is our newest course that has been added on to our course sequence. And then you will also take the third practicum elective and then finally in the last semester there's only one course, um, which is the fourth practicum elective. When students are done with the spring semester in the third year, um, they can plan to take the exam. We recommend for students to, who complete the program in May to take the exam in August. Okay. So as you see listed here, we have specific learning outcomes um, from understanding these concepts and principles of behavior analysis that we've discussed to understanding uh, research methods how do we conduct behavioral assessments to um, identify instructional programming as well as develop behavior reduction plans? How do we write instructional programs to increase behaviors as well as write behavior reduction plans to decrease behaviors? Practicing within our ethical standards, implementing, managing, and practicing behavior analysis in educational settings. And the ultimate learning outcome of this program is to pass the BCBA exam. Okay, so let's talk about practicum. As you probably know, um, we have new field experience requirements. Um, so folks who will be applying after January 2022 will have to adhere to these experience uh, requirements. And so we have set up our program to align with those field experience requirements. So our practicum electives are designed to meet the concentrated experience fieldwork that's outlined by the Behavior Analyst Certification Board. And this is a total of 1,500 hours. So students who enroll in the four electives will be able to complete 375 hours per semester, which, uh, which really equates to about 25 hours per week of um, supervised practicum experience with one and a half hours we provide with an individual supervisor. So we, um, as part of enrolling in this course, students will be assigned an individual supervisor. And also as part of the coursework, you would be able to get uh, group supervision for one hour. Um, let's see. And then also we have our practicum coordinator who helps um, ne negotiate and make placements for all of the uh, students in their respective either employment placements or being placed in an appropriate placement for their practicum experience. Okay, next slide. So some additional information. So upon successful completion of the seven courses, students will uh, be able to graduate from the program and receive a postmaster certificate in applied behavior analysis from Johns Hopkins. Students who um, also complete the four elective practicum courses will then be eligible to apply for the, um, B, to the BACB for certification as a board certified behavior analyst. 
Um, it's important to note that we as a university do not provide that certification in behavior analysis. Um, students must um, pursue certification through the Behavior Analyst Certification Board, but we provide all of the um, documentation and coursework so that students will be able to apply and take the exam. So I'm going to actually turn things over to Alicia Wolf, who is an alumnus of our program, um, and she's going to talk a little bit about her experiences here at Johns Hopkins. Alicia? Sure. Hi. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you, Dr. Martyr. Um, so there's, a, there's an explanation of my background here, but I'm going to give a quick overview. Um, I am currently a, a board-certified behavior analyst, a BCBA, um, working in a large school district that's just outside of DC. Um, and I also work uh, privately in homes with children with autism and their families. Um, however, I did start my career as a special education teacher. Um, and as I was going through the program, um, I graduated in 2018, but as I was going through the program, I was a leader in education, so I was not actually in the classroom. Um, and so for that reason, you know, I was really looking for, for a program that was flexible um, for me, but also, you know, was help, it was, would support me with passing the exam. Um, so I chose the ABA program at Johns Hopkins University School of Education after looking around and really finding three unique um, qualities of the program that, I, that really benefited me. Um, one, the professors, they, they are not only experts, like you can ask them theoretical questions, you'll learn a lot about the knowledge of um, ABA, but they're also practitioners. And so that was really important to me to not only learn knowledge, but also be able to, to ask questions about complex issues that I might encounter while actually working in the field with clients. Um, so that was, that was really helpful for me. Um, in addition to that, uh, the in-person classes, um, going to the, the, an actual place where I was meeting with people was super helpful for me to build relationships with other people who were becoming BCBAs or um, working with the professors and getting to know them in person. Um, I still talk to my cohort now. There was about 10 to 15 of us um, and we were very close knit. I actually got my job after, I got a new job after I graduated um, with uh, some of the people that were in my cohort and, and they were part of that. So that, that was really, really um, a unique experience that I wouldn't have gotten as much of as if it was online. So I enjoyed the in-person classes. And then I also um, was really excited about how the program at Johns Hopkins supported me with practicum and um, assigning a supervisor and um, it being approved by the uh, B, by ABAI. Um, and so I was studying for the exam that was um, some of those studying tips and strategies and, and work for studying for the exam was built into the coursework. So I felt very supported in that way. I didn't have to go out and find my own supervisor. It was built in. Um, so as a result of the program, I felt really prepared to take and pass the BCBA exam, and I felt prepared to be a practitioner as soon as I graduated um, because of the experiences I had as a result of the program. So at, right after I got my, um, after I passed the exam, I did pass it the first time. Um, I took it in August as recommended. Um, as soon as I passed the exam, I was able to um, get a, a, a job privately going to homes and I really felt like the practical experience I got from the program was had had like made put me at an advantage there was a lot of starting BCBAs that might not have gotten the same practical experience that I got uh, that was really helpful um, so for those reasons uh, that was my perspective on on why I chose the program and and how it really has helped me it continues to ongoing help me um, to be a better BCBA. And I'm not sure if we're taking questions in the chat or if I should wait to the end. Yeah, I think we're gonna keep moving, Alicia, but thank you so much um, for your perspective on the program. Um, 
a few more things for us to talk about, and then I'm going to turn things back over to Liz. Um, some advantages of the program. I think I had mentioned this, that the focus is on ABA and education. So um, many of the graduate students who come through our program are working with in the schools with students with autism, severe disabilities, emotional disabilities, intellectual disabilities, inclusion settings, and a variety of special education settings. We are the only graduate school of education in Maryland to offer this specialized certificate. So with this focus, um, I was speaking to somebody earlier today about our program and the focus is really on training individuals to implement ABA in educational settings. Another advantage of our program um, is the practicum experience. Again, we provide that supervisor a BCBA. We vet those supervisors for you, make sure that they have all of the supervisor requirements that they need in order to supervise BCB, future BCBAs. So we provide you with that supervisor. Um, we have a course that's associated with practicum. Um, and although there is um, coursework that we have to follow for practicum, the experience that um, Again, that is associated with a course, but it's really individualized based on your skill level coming into the program. Another question we get a lot about is um, pass rates. Um, so um, this is an advantage of our program that students who complete the program do pass the exam above the national pass rate. Um, as of May 2019, we've had 49 students take the exam. 48 graduates have become board certified. So this includes both our first and second time candidates taking the exam. So we have about a 98% pass rate. In 2019, um, the BCBA exam first time pass rate. So the BCBA, um, the BACB reports these pass rates. You can see them on their website. Um, the ABA program at Hopkins was 76% where the national average was 63%. So we're above that um, national average. I will say this, these dates are as of May 2019 for the number of students who've passed, who've graduated from the school. We have 15 students who are just graduating this summer. Um, so hopefully though, we will have more numbers to add there for as of May or June 2020. Another advantage of our program is, as we had mentioned before, that our faculty are all board certified behavior analysts. And as Alicia mentioned, our practicing behavior anal analysis every single day. Okay, next slide. Um, since the program's inception in 2013, we've had 61 students graduate from the program with another 15 um, who are finishing this summer. Um, another impact of our program is that we represent a variety of educational professionals. As I mentioned before, um, from special educators to school psychologists, we represent 11 different school systems across Maryland and DC. And um, we have six cohorts who have completed the program. 48 graduates are board certified and additional 15 are preparing to take the exam very soon. Thank you, Dr. Martyr, and uh, congratulations on that uh, great pass rate um, really speaks to um, the strength of the program and, and certainly speaking uh, with Alicia and her experiences both um, in and, and after I think are, are really valuable to this conversation. So thank you. Um, I wanted to come back and cover kind of the logistics of admissions. Um, you know, what's involved, what do you need, what might you want to look out for. Um, and certainly we can extend these conversations beyond today. We'll have our contact information at the end of the call, um, as Dr. Martyr will also be available to answer questions post today's uh, webinar session. Um, but at a minimum, you're looking at a completed online application form, which includes an upload of your CV or resume and a personal statement. Um, we do require a GPA cumulative for your undergraduate and graduate of 3.0 or better for admissions consideration. Uh, we have an $80 application fee. We do require all official transcripts from every post-secondary institution you attended. Um, if you've attended and we'll cover anyone who may have uh, completed their degrees outside the US or Canada in a moment, but official transcripts, um, even if you have transfer credits that appear on a primary degree transcript, we do require all of those to be submitted as part of an application. Um, we also have two letters of recommendation and within our online application system, you can actually identify 
uh, the names um, and professional email addresses of your recommenders and it will, through the application system, will send them an invitation to complete and upload a letter of recommendation for you. This program does not require a GRE, a general GRE score. Um, it's not applicable to the program learning outcomes or goals. Um, we do require, however, um, according to the BACB guidelines, that you do have a specific master's degree preparation um, in special education, applied behavior analysis, psychology, and we can certainly open that up for questions uh, in the Q&A um, if you have questions about your background and suitability for the program. For international applicants, we do require an English language proficiency test um, in the form of either an IELTS or TOEFL score. Um, if you are, um, if English is not your native or resident language, however, you, you may be a permanent resident in the United States or you may have lived here for a time, we do have a waiver form located within our application. Um, more commonly, people who have completed undergraduate or graduate work here but are not uh, residents, uh, U.S. residents, could apply for that waiver. Um, if you've completed any of your prior degrees, your qualifying degrees, and to qualify for this program, you have to have a four-year bachelor's degree and a master's degree in that particular subject area. We do require what we call a course-by-course -course evaluation um, of your, um, any transcript or that is earned outside the U.S. or Canada. Um, and for additional information, we do have a comprehensive website for international students. So the additional requirements would be the English language proficiency test and the course by course uh, credential evaluation of your transcripts, um, which will serve as your transcripts. So um, you only need to submit for that. And we have some detailed instructions on how to do that on our website. In terms of tuition and fees, um, what you see here is our 2021 uh, uh, fees for the next academic year. Um, the, all of the ABA coursework is, the seven courses required are at the, what we call the face-to-face -face or lecture traditional format cost of 833 per credit or $2,499 per course. There is a registration and enrollment fee assessed each semester that you enroll and the application fee. There are additional costs for people who decide to um, take, you know, who will continue on to the practicum courses, which is, um, uh, they are considered the 12 electives. There will be additional costs and, and, and uh, fees to cover supervision fees as part of those courses. Um, so additional program and fee information is available on the school website. In terms of financial aid and scholarships, this program is eligible for federal financial aid, which is in the form of loans. Um, the majority of our students, 82% of our degree-seeking students, do borrow through the federal financial aid system. Um, we require a free application for federal student aid form, um, just as a, you know, and I, I always encourage students who are applying to do that along with your application. You don't need to wait to get an admissions decision to begin that paperwork. Um, Typically, you know, it, it, you will get assigned an ID, um, but it doesn't obligate you to borrow anything. It just puts you in the system should you um, get your admissions decision and decide to move forward. Um, so we really do encourage you to consider doing that either directly after, while you're waiting for a decision, while you're doing your application, but certainly do not wait um, until you get a final decision to do that. Um, you can list a number of schools on your FASPA form, uh, but it's a good idea to have that done um, in terms of institutional scholarships, we do have a limited number of partial, what we call need-based scholarships, um, and need-based is determined by your FAFSA form, so that is required to be completed. Um, they are available for fall and spring semesters, um, and we have external scholarship resources uh, also available through scholarships.com, teacher.org, there's also um, more and more I'm seeing scholarships, external scholarships that you can apply to for ABA um, on, on most of the websites um, that you, uh, both for graduate uh, work. So, you know, I encourage students to look at external as well as um, financial aid and loans. But I would say, you know, the majority of our students are borrowing some form of federal student aid um, through that system. And now I'd like to open it up for our questions and answers. Thank you for your patience. And, uh, and certainly um, we're looking forward to receiving some of your questions um, 
they can range from anywhere about the curriculum, the sequence, um, anything that you may have to ask. We ask that you use the chat feature in Zoom. Um, we'll read your question aloud and then Dr. Martyr or myself will provide an answer to for your question. So Liz, as folks are writing in their questions, can we go back to slide 19? There were a few things I just wanted to quickly review on that slide. Okay, thank you. So, um, so sometimes I get this question, so maybe I'm heading off a few of the questions right now, but who is your ideal candidate for this program? So um, we typically say our ideal candidate is someone who uh, demonstrates a desire to commit to the field of applied behavior analysis. This is just not another credential to achieve. This is um, being committed to this field and um, learning this field and implementing it. Um, understanding all of the requirements to become board certified that are outlined by the BACB. We are here to support all of our students who are seeking to become board certified. There are um, requirements that uh, students should understand prior to um, entering into the program. The ability to commit two to three years of intensive graduate coursework. And um, the ideal candidate obviously demonstrates um, all of the admission requirements that we have outlined today. And then finally, uh, willing to work hard and study hard. Um, this is an intensive program um, and students who are willing to put the time in are quite successful with this program and um, turn out to become great board certified behavior analysts. Okay, great. So thank you, Liz, for going back to that slide. And then we can open it up for any questions that have come through. I have a, a first question and we're looking forward to some more, but um, can the program be accelerated? In other words, do I need, you know, do we have, is it a lockstep cohort or is there opportunity to complete it faster than the three year period? So typically um, the program is, um, typically the program is, we want everybody to go through the course sequence at the same time. Folks who uh, choose not to do the practicum with us um, certainly can complete the program in two years. Um, but typically, um, typically, pretty much we follow that course sequence. Um, and again, if, um, if you want to complete it in two years, that's, that's as fast as it could go. Okay, great, thank you. I have a um, question from Jessica. Um, she was wondering if we could re-review the time commitment for the courses two nights a week. Um, can you run through that for us, Dr. Martyr, just to um, reiterate? Yeah, sure. Is? Yeah, sure. So um, typically the courses, each course is three hours a night, right? So um, for example, during this past fall semester, students came to campus on Monday evenings um, from six to nine. And then um, for one course, uh, that was the research methods course. And then on Wednesday evenings, they came back to campus um, from six to nine and um, had the second course, which is the intro to applied behavior analysis course. So typically across one week, it's about six hours of coursework. And then when you add in the practicum in subsequent years, um, the, um, the time commitment for course time, you know, in class is one hour per week. So it's an additional hour each week for that group supervision course. Great, thank you. Um, question, is a personal interview required as part of the admissions process? Yes, it is. Um, once the um, faculty committee reviews um, the applications, um, then the next step would be to be invited for a interview um, with the faculty. Right now we are conducting all of those interviews online um, and, um, and that's pretty much it, right? So that would be the second step would be the interview. Question, um, you mentioned that the practicum is included in elective courses. Um, how does that compare to other programs and how they're structured? Um, most other programs, so that's an interesting question. Most other programs, the practicum, um, either programs from my researching of other programs do not offer the practicum coursework. 
um, but it's usually an additional course. It's not embedded within each of the other courses. So they are separate from the um, course requirements. The way that our professional board, uh, the BACB looks at it is there, um, we have coursework hours, which is about 315 hours of coursework. That gives you those seven courses. And then um, you have the um, 1500 hours of supervised experience. Now we offer the concentrated supervised experience, which is the 1500 hours. Folks can do uh, practicum on their own or supervised experience on their own. Um, and typically that's about 2000 hours. Um, so it's a, it is more time for folks to do it on their own as opposed to do it through a practicum course. Wow, so that's, that's a big actual distinction. I, um, you know, so basically you have fewer hours if you do this as part of the you know, combined formal course than if you went off and got supervision hours on by yourself. That's correct? Correct, yes. Wow, okay, thank you. Thank you, good question. Um, in terms of letters of recommendation for recommenders, um, do you recommend that they, they need to be all academic, academic or professional? Can you give me more information on what would be acceptable forms for recommendations? So I would recommend a um, combination of academic and professional. If you can have at least one professor who you have worked with in the past, um, make recommendation or comment on your ability to be successful in graduate school. Obviously, most folks who are applying to this program have obviously have been through graduate school and had a master's degree um, because you need that in order to apply to the program. Um, but um, so, you know, having a professor, a past professor provide a recommendation is definitely um, definitely will support your application. And then also another professional um, is quite fine, too. Can you clarify what master de master's degrees, academic subjects are, are, you would be eligible to enter this program? So we actually follow the BACB recommendations on this. And in the past, it has been a master's in school site, I'm um, sorry, a master's in special education or psychology. The BACB actually has just opened this back up so that there is no specific requirement. Um, I do think that folks who want to go through this program, having a background in special education is to their advantage. Um, and having a background in education um, and psychology obviously is to their advantage. Um, but we do follow the BACB recommendations on that. So there, there is no, um, in the past they have, um, they have focused in on uh, education and psychology, but they have opened that back up for additional master's degrees like master's in social work and so forth. But to be successful in this program is having a background um, in, a, you know, in, in working in an educational setting. The follow up question to that, if I don't have a master's degree in that area, is there a pathway, a degree pathway available at Johns Hopkins that would allow me to then eventually pursue the ABA? Yeah, so um, we have, um, it, it would depend on that person's background um, and what um, their previous degrees already and their current um, place of employment as you know that experience um, adds to their background. So I would say that would be on a case by case basis to look at that. Um, but we do have um, additional, you know, we have other programs in special education, as well as um, we have courses in autism um, and a variety of different um, educational courses here at Johns Hopkins that could be um, options for students who are, who are looking to gain more of that experience. Great. So it looks like that concludes the questions. I'll leave maybe um, if there's one or two more. Anyone has them? I'm not seeing any in the chat. We'll give a few seconds. And I'd like to put this slide up um, just while we're waiting um, to give everyone kind of uh, our team here in admissions. You'll see Tanya McMillan, our admissions coordinator, uh, would be your uh, next point of contact if you're interested or have any questions about submitting the application. Um, also part of our um, ABA team is Camilla Mika Sims. She's the academic program coordinator who works with all of our ABA students and Dr. Martyr 
um, and she's our point of contact once um, students begin the program. And of course, Dr. Martyr, um, we will send out everyone's contact information as well as a recorded um, video after this presentation today. So if we do not have any additional questions, I would like to thank everyone for joining us for our Postmaster Certificate in Applied Behavior Analysis webinar. Uh, we look forward to receiving your application. Again, our next start is uh, this program only admits students in the fall and we are still accepting applications through August um, and with a August 26th start date for the semester. So with that, thank you very much. Have a wonderful evening. Take care.